In this video, I'm going to go over how to make an edit like this for Magnates Media. Term Banana Republic was initially coined to describe countries who were under economic exploitation by US corporations such as the United Fruit Company. The free project file will be in the description. Thanks for all the support so far. Now let's get right to it. So I'm in After Effects. I've got a basic 1920 by 1080 composition, 24 second frame rate. And I've dragged in the original file from Magnets Media. Let's make a new solid layer, just the black. Just move it behind the original video. Now let's make a new text layer and Banana Republic. The font that I'm using is Rail Railroad Gothic. And we'll change it to black or let's go Actually, yeah, it's too black for now. I guess you can't see it, but let's turn it off the background there. And now let's make a new rectangle. So hit Q a couple times if you don't have a rectangle. So draw a rectangle. Let's change the color to a yellow. We'll put it behind the Banana Republic. So once you've got your rectangle and your Banana Republic type um, in, let's make sure they're kind of aligned in the composition, you can align them with the align kind of menu. It's best to align stuff before you go into 3D because you can't align stuff in 3D when your layer is a 3D layer. <laughs> so yeah, let's scale it up a bit. Something like that just for now. And then we can change the size of that. Let's turn that back on. Let's make a new camera with a 50 millimeter preset. And we'll turn everything on 3D. And now we will position these two layers appropriately. So let's go into the camera and let's position the camera so that you can kind of see the outline of our layer in the background with the blue, the blue rectangle kind of. But we can also just turn it off and kind of see that it matches up. Let's also go into the original black layer and just scale it up way more. So it is like takes up the whole area. So now we have that kind of positioned properly, but you can notice that it doesn't start like that. Like the, it kind of is masked in. So let's do that. Let's go into our two layers, pre-comp them and then go back to the original layer. Now select the pre-comp, grab the rectangle tool, and we'll just mask out something like this. Make it really big, like wider than the composition. And then we can go into the mask, keyframe the mask path. And then we'll go to the original video and we can see where it comes in. So right about here, it starts animating in. So keyframe that. And then we can go to the end of it, like right about here, let's say. And then just, whoops, whoops. Select the mask and then just move it over to something like that. And now you can see it animates in. But on the original video, you can see how it's kind of feathered, right? Like there's a bit of um, feathering. It's not like a hard edge. So to do that, all we have to do is go into the mask and just increase the feather a bit, something like that. Cool. So now we have, oh, you can see here, obviously kind of it's peaking. So let's go to the keyframe where it starts and just move it over a bit. Now it's good. Now let's add that main guy with the face paint um, in to the composition. I just made this guy with mid journey, or you can use the one in the project file like the exact same one I'm using here. So we'll kind of line it up properly. That looks good for now, sizing wise. So I think right now maybe we should turn everything to 3D. So we've got the camera, now these layers are 3D. Let's scale the main guy up on the Z axis just to create some depth between the background Banana Republic thing, something like here. And now let's add some camera movement. So let's go into the original video and we can see here it just starts zooming out essentially from here and ends up right about here. So we can place a keyframe right about here and then we'll just zoom way out to 
kind of just match it up. And it also comes down a bit, something like that. This looks bad, but I'll have a, I'll fix that soon with a gradient. <laughs> it can actually even come a bit more up, something like that, right? Cool. So now we have this camera movement. It's just a linear movement. So we can go into, I use this plugin called Flow, but you can just easy ease your keyframes with F, F9 if you want, and then go into the graph editor and you can change them. But I'm just going to hit this and it's going to ease in the animation and ease out. So now it's a bit smoother. So now that we have that, we can go back in here and see what we have to do. So we have the camera movement. There's also a American flag in the background, so we can add that in. And I've noticed also the main dude is a bit rotated down, I'd say, something like that for the whole thing. That looks just a bit better, I think. So yeah, so let's add that American flag in. Let's make it 3D, scale it up quite a bit. We're gonna have to move it back on the Z quite a bit, actually. Turn the 3D off on that main background there, actually. And yeah, let's keep on just zooming it back on the Z. Now let's scale it up. Go to the end keyframe where it's like most zoomed out and then we can kind of just make sure that it's positioned properly and then it won't be obviously zoomed out when it's in here because it's zoomed in. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's much darker than the original, so we can change the opacity down, something like 33. So now we have it kind of matching up. I'm going to use FX console to bring up a vignette real quick. So yeah, just vignetting the flag a bit. We can increase the opacity a bit because the vignette kind of takes, like obviously makes it darker. I'm also going to add a black gradient thing that I have here um, and just spread it out and kind of make it more gradual. For the sake of the video, let's just go into that layer and move them down a bit. So it kind of just looks better, centered, cool. So now we have quite a bit so far. You can see right about here, it's pretty bright and then it starts getting darker, right? So we can just do that pretty simply by duplicating the original black background. And then we'll go in front of everything pretty much. And then we'll just turn down the opacity to something like 20. And then when it starts to get darker, right about here, it's still light, I'd say. So it's keyframe. And then we can go into when it's like fully dark, maybe like right about here. <laughs> And we'll keyframe the opacity and then go back to the original and just change it to zero. I'll change it to something like 10 so it just doesn't look too dark. I'm also going to add an adjustment layer now just so it looks everything looks better because in the original they use it. But I'm going to pull up Deep Glow, which is a paid plugin. But if you have another glow or another, like the built in After Effects glow or another glow that you like or free glow, use that. And then we're just going to play with the settings a bit. I think I like point like 115, 15, sorry, and then something like that. So now that nicely like merge kind of blends, blends everything together. And that's actually changed the position on this main guy a bit. So there's more depth and then we'll just scale, scale him back down and then just mess with the scale a bit. And now we have this. Cool, the American flag is kind of not covering the whole thing, so let's change it like that, and then, cool, there we go. Now let's bring in those hands that come in, and then the map. So, you guys can get this again in the project file in the description, but I'm just gonna bring in these hands, and then scale them back a bit. Let's turn them 3D right now. And then, so they come in right about here, right? So to do that, first let's maybe kind of get them scaled properly, the right size. So we can go to the end of the movement and just look at the scale from the original video. So they've got to come, come quite a bit forward. Just scale them back a bit though, I guess. Okay, something like that I think looks good, right? Yeah, that's good enough. 
I'm going to move it above the black gradient thing just so it's a bit pops a bit more. I'm going to add another adjustment layer now. So let's go into add a new adjustment layer. I'm going to pull up a Lumetri color. And then I'm going to go into creative and just pull up a LUT real quick. If you don't know what a LUT is, it's pretty much like a color grade that affects like your whole composition essentially in like a cool artistic way. <laughs> Terrible explanation, but this is what it looks like right now, but we can just turn the intensity down quite a bit. But now we have more of like a artistic kind of cooler look. Change the intensity down even more like the 30. So from this to that, looks better, right? Cool. And in the original, you can see the hands like wiggling a bit, like rotating left and right. Let's go into the hand layer to R to bring up the Z. Um, like we'll go into the Z property. Hit Alt and click the stopwatch thing. And we'll go wiggle something like 0.66 maybe, something like that. And now we have a nice little rotation. So now let's add in that map real quick. So I've just got this random map and it's green obviously. So let's just throw in a fill and then we'll make it something like this yellow. Now let's make it 3D. We can just copy the position, the Z position of the hands to that, but then we have to scale it way down. Let's keep on scaling it, something like that. So that looks good. We should also draw, add a drop shadow just so it's a bit more clear against like the bright hands. It's not really that much contrast. Decrease the distance to zero and then just increase the softness to something you like. And then the, play with the opacity if you want. But I think that looks good. Kind of adds contrast obviously, right? So now let's look at the original and see what we have to kind of do. You can see how there's all kinds of like little things that are flying around, like little embers, I would say, or something. I don't even know how to describe them, but it's common in a lot of these kind of videos. So I've just got a random one like that from Motion Array. So I'm just gonna drag that in and you can see it's obviously blue. So we can go into hue, saturation, and just decrease the saturation a ton and then click this and then go into the blend modes and then something like lighten but it's still too strong, so we should change it to something like 40. Cool, so now we have like this kind of ember look, right? Also a bit of smoke or mist that we can add. So I've also got a smoke kind of overlay. Doesn't matter though. These are just fine, fine tuning details really, I'd say. So yeah, this one's pretty strong. It changed it to maybe 30. And now there's just a bit more movement. Cool. So now let's go into the original video see what we have to do. So you can see right here, the camera movement goes up to like from here to here, right about there. So let's do that. Let's go into our camera layer. Let's hit keyframe and then just drag it up. Somewhere like that, I think. Somewhere like that, right? And you can see again that darn flag is peaking. So we can just scale it up or play with the position property if you want, but I think that's that's fine. So now we have that movement and in the original, this United Fruit Com Company logo comes up. So let's do that. I've got the logo here. I'm just gonna drag it in above everything besides the camera. Gonna scale it way down and then make sure it's 3D. I think it starts animating in like right about here. So we can just go into the position and position it way down. Let's actually move it behind the world map and then we'll just keyframe the position from here so that it animates in. We'll go something like that and then go here maybe and just, whoops, drag it up. Whoa, it's quite a bit bigger. 
in the original. Yeah, you know what? Let's go to our original camera and just have it zoomed in a bit more, something like that. We'll go to that Z position and then just copy it onto the last keyframe, I think. So there we go. Now we have, now it's zoomed in. And let's scale this logo up quite a bit. There we go. So that looks pretty good. You can see how it's peaking through there. So let's go into the position and just move it down more. And now it's completely kind of hidden. I think the logo animates in too slow. So let's just drag the end keyframe a bit forward or back, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and then again, I'm going to easy ease those keyframes so it just looks a bit smoother. Cool. So now let's take so now let's take a look at what it looks like now. So now let's see what we have so far. So I think that looks pretty good. So I think that looks pretty good. Now we can go back to the original and see where the camera movement goes. So you can see how it zooms in from here, right? And then kind of hangs out around here for a while. So let's do that. Let's go in to here. Let's go into our camera, let's zoom in, and then go to where it kind of is. I think it's somewhere around here, right? Yeah, maybe a bit lower or something, something like that. So I think that's pretty much it, honestly. I think it looks pretty similar to the original. It's pretty simple to make once you kind of just break it down frame by frame and kind of see what's actually going on. Because it looks really cool. But if you don't really know or haven't thought of like what's going on, it, can, it kind of seems hard to do. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Got some value from it. Like I said, you can find the free project file in the description. If you want to work with me, you can message me on Instagram or just comment down below here and I'll contact you. You can like and subscribe if you want or don't if you hate me. Um, that's okay. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Peace.